Select an image in Affinity Photo. Any image, shape, can be turned into a raster image, etc. But now I've got this image, this is of me, very blurry image, back in my university days, I think. And I can just go over here. Just go to the liquify. So just there, liquify. And you can see now this grid. Now you can check out my other videos on the liquify persona and brushes. There's a whole variety of different brushes. But the key thing here, the mask panel and brush. Actually, they're both useful, very useful panels. So let's just go to view, studio, and you can see them there. Mask, brushes, and all those ones. You can see all the panels there. So if you can modify if you want. What you can do, say you want this part to be frozen and all this to be warped. Or you've got something that you want, a particular straight line that you want slightly moved, but none of the rest to be touched. You can mask it. Here's the mask tool. So I'm just going to go over here. But it's weirdly, it's called liquify freeze tool, just to be different, <laughs> always the way. So click there. And now what you can do, you can just go around this, this part. Now I could go over any of these parts, maybe the window. I'm just going to go over here. But you can change the size of the brush. Maybe that's a bit too big. You can see that change, get smaller. And also you can change the hardness. So you can make it sort of blurry. Got a bit more blur there. Or you can go for hard. So you can see it just becomes a very sharp, which maybe is not what you want. Up to you. Also, you can change your opacity. So maybe you want very subtle. In fact, so subtle you can't see it. Just put it about 14 and you can see it there. But if you put it up to there, you can see it much more intense. And you can modify these settings, just play around with them and just get what you want. I'm just going to go for that. Speed, I don't think it particularly matters but you can just apply it over there. Now these settings, I don't know if they have any real effect. It's possible, be honest, doesn't look any different to me, but that's it. Sadly, you can't use the brushes from within the application. You can't use oil, you can't use charcoal, etc. But these ones, they may have some subtle effect, maybe on bigger pictures, I don't know. Oh, you've got some settings up here. These settings as well, they're exactly the same that's in the mask. So you've got clear mask, mask. Or, so so you, I'm just going to show you that later. So let's just go through this first. So I've just masked that. You can just see me now masked there. And now I'm just going to apply a brush. Just any of them. Let's just go over to this one. Now this will use the same settings. So you might have to change the settings as well. But what you can do, you can press against that. And as you press against it, you can see, oh, I want to try and get that against crunching against me. But what it does, it doesn't. It can't move. You can try and try and you can see it warping around it. And you can walk down there, walk down there, walk down there and so on and so on. But it will not warp me. It will just warp around all this. And that's why you can freeze certain places or mask certain places. And then you can apply it. So click apply. And you can see now you've warped it, but you haven't warped there. You can control the warp and how much it warps or not by all those settings. So let's just go back again into there and click there and just apply it again, just very rapidly like that. What you think, you know what, I don't want that. Don't want that, I've decided I don't want it. Well, what you can do, you can clear it. So you can get rid of it very quickly. Or you can just put it back again. But also you can invert the mask. Say you know, you know, I don't want it me in the centre to be frozen. I can unfreeze that. So I can just say invert that mask. So I can now, now that's masked. But I think, you know what, I want a bit more of it to be things. So I can go over here and I can set this one, the Thor tool, weird names. And I can just go over there and just say, oh, you know what, let's bring that back. And that's what that does. It just get, goes around that bit of the image and you can say, just get rid of that. So that bit, all the red, is going to be masked. So if I apply effects, let's just quickly go over here, one of the brushes, and I can warp it. I can't warp it outside. It will hit that boundary and it will not go any further. And it will just keep hitting it. Nope, it's not going to go any further. However, what you can also do is you can say mask all as well. So click mask all and then it's all masked. And of course then, of course, you apply a brush, it doesn't work. However, of course, what you can do, you can always go over here, which is this one, the liquefy Thor tool, and apply the Thor there. So it's just a quick, if you've got a very big image and you want to just basically most of it masked, 
Obviously, the mask all is quite useful just to do that. And you can see what you can do. You can just use that Thor just to remove bits of it like that that you want to use. And then again, just go over here, select one of the tools and just apply to the area that's not masked, that red. Now, unfortunately, you can't change the color. I'm not certain why not. Would seem to be an obvious thing to do to actually change them. Though by convention, normally red is masking. I don't know, that's just a convention that seems to be the case. I guess that probably comes back from uh, back in the days in, uh, when masking was used elsewhere. So I guess maybe red was somehow that color. But it would be nice if you could change it to blue, green, etc. Because sometimes, of course, you might have an image that's full of red that you don't want masking to red because that confuses. That's just a minor point. Anyway, you can modify, let's say, the size, the brush with this one as well, the thought, exactly the same, and you can apply more. And again, you can still invert the mask. So you again, get that back. Invert mask, invert mask, etc. And you can just quickly use these tools. There's not many features in the mask, but they're powerful and they're great for creating all kinds of different sizes. Once you're happy with everything, click apply and that's it. It's just done. You can do exactly the same with, obviously with other ones like type, images, etc., shapes that you've been converted, like say to pixels. Also what you can also do, is repeat liquefy. So the mask, all that sort of stuff is still obviously stored away and you can repeat and it will just apply it just to that area. So you can create an interesting liquefy effect just to that area, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, layer, in this case, you have got fade. When you use another one, when you use shapes and things, weirdly, that being compared, it doesn't always give you the option for fade. Now I have noticed quite a few times that fade is not there, but you can fade liquefy, very useful. That is handy. So occasionally you can use fade. And of course useful if you've got fade means you can run through and use blending modes. And I'm gonna do a video on the fade, etc., independent of this, but I just wanted to show you, you can go through these and create some very interesting effects with the masking, as well as fades, as well as repeats. Again, repeat liquefy, and you can see the effect there. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.